This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and today's project is a child's warm hat. This is inspired by the drive for warm woolen clothing for cold children in Nepal over on Crossroads Knits blog. Now, I've got a link to the blog on my blog, diananatters.blogspot.com. She's collecting these because the impoverished homeless people in Nepal living in shanties have to endure very difficult cold winters. Now, the primary wool yarn that I use at my house is good quality sock yarn. I crank a lot of socks. And in thinking about what kind of hat I might want to knit to keep little kids' ears warm, I like to do English rib because of the thickness, especially with the thin yarn like this woolen sock yarn. This is uh, some Knit Picks Bear that I actually dyed with Kool-Aid, which would make a fun video one of these days. And what I've done here is put a band of ribbing on and make it a generous size so that a child can yank it down and even fold the ribbing over again over the ears. And this hat goes quickly. It takes about 40 grams. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my little leftover balls of sock wool and I'm putting them on a gram scale to see if I've got 40 grams. And if I do, I've got enough to make a hat. Now the machine is a Brother 965i, but any standard gauge machine of any make could be used to make this hat so long as you have a ribber because this is a ribber technique. You'll want to grab your manual and set your machine up for one by one ribbing, that's knit one, purl one ribbing, and that means for my machine that both carriages are set on the tightest tension below tension zero. They're both set for plain knitting, and I have the ribber arm on and the ribber up and in place. So I'm about to do my zigzag row. The needle arrangement is 100 needles all together in one by one ribbing setup from needle number 50 on the left to needle number 50 on the right. It's set on P or plain pitch, and every other needle is on the ribber. I'm threading the machine by taking the yarn and dropping it between the beds. Then I grab it in between the beds. And I like to put a clothes pin on it. Then I feed it into the ribber arm. And I'm going to do one row from right to left to get the zigzag row on. Now I'm going to hang my comb. I'm going to bring it up between the two beds and pull the wire out, at least partially. I've got one of those sturdy wires on this comb. And then slide it back in. You can read about the sturdy wires over on the blog. They're just a wonderful thing to have. And then I'm going to put two of the large weights on the comb. One on the left end, one on the right, and that will be sufficient weight for this project. The next step in the cast on is the three circular rows. So I put the right part lever up on the river, and I put the left part button in on the main bed. Then I set both carriages to tension three, and I knit three rows. step is to do 12 rows of plain one-by-one one ribbing. This is the cuff that goes down over the ears, and I'm going to set the river back to plain knitting and tension 4. And I set the main bed to plain knitting and tension 4. And then I knit my 12 rows. The next step is to do the 72 rows of English rib. So I want these two levers up so that the ribber will tuck to the left. And I'm also going to change the tension to tension 5 on both carriages. And now I'll just knit my 72 rows. And knit 72 rows. After 
all the English rib is knitted, I change back to plain knitting and I go down to tension 4 on both carriages. And then I do 6 rows of plain ribbing. Now to transfer all the stitches to the main bed from the river, I'm going to rack once to the right so that the needles are lined up above and below and then just pick up a stitch with the double eyed needle and transfer it up to the main bed. And I'm going to do this all the way across before I do a few rows of plain knitting. Now I drop the ribber by using the lever on each end and I drop it all the way down to the bottom position. The regular carriage arm Seat it well, tighten a little knot, and then thread it. It's set for plain knitting, and I'm going to bring the tension down one click, knit across, and I'm going to do five rows each time bringing the tension down one click at the beginning of the row. So I went from tension to four to tension three and two clicks. I'm just going to sew the remaining stitches off on a needle. So I begin by cutting a long enough piece of yarn that I can sew up the side seam. And I'm going to thread that in a tapestry needle. Bring all my stitches, all my needles, to hold and my stitches back behind the hook. And I have found that since I've gotten to such a tight tension that I need to hold the needle pusher and just poke them back with my fingers. And now it's so simple to just take this yarn and poke the needle in the first stitch and pop it off and poke it in the second stitch, pop it off. And I just do that on a cross. After I do a few, I pull the yarn through after the needle is kind of full of loops. So now the needle is, is getting full, so I just bring the yarn through and start again. I find that it's important to take the weights off a little ways into this process. and it's time to do that. So I'll just reach down and remove both weights and I'll remove the comb as well. And instead of this big river comb and two of the large weights, I'm merely going to have one small claw weight. I'll put a claw weight under where I'm working. And then I'll continue just taking the stitches off onto the tapestry needle. Here's my completed hat. I'll have to gather this top and I'll have to sew a side seam 